Hi there, it's Jennifer Trask, Mindset Coach and Business Advisor for Coaches and Healers. And welcome to this video on how to clarify your to-do list and train your monkey brain. Now, I'm really excited to make this video because someone actually asked me, I, I always ask for feedback uh, when I'm, I'm do with my community, and this was a topic that was asked for me to do, so I'm really excited about this one. Um, I'm also excited about this one because I, can, I find that this is a topic that, um, if we don't get it, you can really waste a lot of time. And I don't want you to waste any time in your business. You wanna maximize every moment you have, especially especially for those of you who are parents or you have another full or part-time job. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, even when you're full-time in your business, you have to maximize your time. But when you're really short on time, like if you only have 10 or 20 hours a week to work on your business, you really gotta maximize them, right? And to be honest with you, sometimes that's to your advantage because the more something makes you focus, like the better results you're going to get. I learned that, uh, I learned that tip from my dad. Uh, he always used to tell me that because I kind of was very scattered and um, say, Jennifer, you need to learn to focus, like focus. <laughs> I had so many things that I wanted to do. I'm sure as an entrepreneur, you can relate. But the reality is that if you want to master something, you do need to focus on it. And if you do want to grow your business, you want more clients, you want more people in your programs and products, then you need to learn about them and you need to master it. So I have two specific tips that I think are really going to help you kind of train that monkey brain and really figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. So the first thing is you want to pre-plan your days. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you figure out the priorities, that's the second part, but I really wanna talk about this. So pre-planning your days. This is the best thing ever to a business owner. Um, when I started doing this, uh, I did it mostly consistently and on the days that I didn't do it, boy did I waste time. So what was good about that was that I really realized and recognized the value that is in pre-planning your days. So what does that mean and what does that look like? So it means the day before, whether it's the end of your work day or the night before you go to bed, um, you have your list for tomorrow. Now, personally, I like the timetable and task type of list. Now, sometimes, um, Figure out what works for you. For some people, it works really well to do it this way. For others, they like to be a little more fluid and you know, what, whatever floats your boat. Um, as long as you get it done, that's all that I care about. So, for example, uh, this morning I knew that in the morning I had a list of about four things that I wanted to get done before I had my first call and then I had call and then I knew I was going to yoga and then I was coming back and having lunch and getting ready then I was going to make these videos which I'm doing and right after this I'm gonna be going to do some work on the back end of my website um, and a couple other things that are on my list so what that means is that I know from pretty much when I wake up to the end of the day what my day looks like and what tasks I'm going to be doing throughout those days uh, throughout the day. Now, it is not 100% from one to two, I'm doing this, and two to three, but there is a general kind of flow. Um, and I also do always recommend doing the stuff you don't want to do and or what should be your highest priority first before you get on to doing anything else, which means your email should not be first priority nor social media, unless you're chunking your social media um, or you're in the middle of a challenge or something and you have, or a, a launch and obviously being on social media is important at that time, that's different. Uh, otherwise it can wait and so can your email. So that is my first tip to help train your monkey brain. The reason this also helps train your and stay calm and focused and more deliberate in your work is because you know what you gotta do. There's no second guessing, like how often have you wasted time being like, okay, what should I do next? Hmm, maybe I should clean the floors. They are looking dirty these days. And maybe I should check my email. And then, oh, you get this email. And it remembers you, oh, right, I gotta do this. And oh, I should go run this errand. And oh, I'll put this on the list. And then the phone rings and then a text message. And then you go to Facebook and holy smokes, you get down that rabbit hole, right? 
And so what happens is hours can literally slip by and you really haven't done anything productive. But when you pre-plan your day and you stick to it, then you get things done. Now, obviously, we live in a world where life happens. But I'm telling you, if you do this day in and day out, generally life doesn't happen that much that it's going to take you off task very often. So you should be on a roll every day getting stuff done. So that is the first way that you can get more organized. You can train that monkey brain because you know what you have to do. Now, let's talk about the second piece of this, which is what do you need to be doing? Well, the simplest answer is, especially when you are in beginning growth stages, you need to make money. So you need to be doing the revenue producing activities in your business. So I want you to look at all the things that you're doing what's making you the most money. So this means high priority items should be things such as discovery calls, uh, obviously servicing the people whom you already have on board. Um, it should be your best marketing tactics. So if you're doing your blog regularly, if you're um, whatever list building you're doing and building a relationship with that list, uh, if you're regularly writing articles, uh, if you are doing webinars or you're doing Facebook Live or whatever, you need to be doing the activities that are going to produce you revenue. Now, obviously, your marketing doesn't initially produce revenue, but if they are generating leads for you and building a relationship with those leads, then that leads to the discovery calls, which helps you grow your business. And that's a really, really good thing. So, um, oh, follow up, follow up would be in there. Make sure you're following up with people on a consistent basis. Um, maybe you're going out to networking events. So it is the things that are going to produce revenue for you. So um, you might be thinking, uh, but what about my admin and my email and this and that? Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so here's the deal. Yes, your admin and your uh, like and your um, bills and uh, your invoicing and all that jazz that does need to get done. What I want you to do is I want you to bulk that activity. Uh, I want you to stop checking email so often. Do it like once or twice a day max. Um, when you go into social media, be very deliberate. Be utilizing whatever your strategy is, not just sort of randomly surfing people's stuff. You know, going into the groups that you're a part of and adding value, making sure you're doing your posts on your page and your personal profile and this and that, whatever it is. Um, and be very deliberate. Get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. Because then you don't waste time going down the Facebook hole. We've all done it. I am just as guilty. That's how I know this stuff. So um, those are kind of the, that's the two biggest tips. If you pre-plan your day and stick to it, you will not waste time, which is great. And second, you must do the most re revenue generating activities for your business. So making your current clients happy definitely helps with your revenue because they'll give you referrals and they'll stay on board. Um, and two, discovery calls, things that are going to get you in front of people. Actually, that might even be speaking. So three, like speaking is a really great way to market your business. Um, if you're going to networking events, if you're doing your webinars or blogging or you're doing calls or teleseminars or whatever it is you're doing. But make sure um, you're choosing the activities that are sort of getting you the highest yield, right, for the effort that you're putting in. So that's what you want to do. Um, so now I would love to hear from you. Have you been pre-planning your days? If not, uh, will you make a commitment to do it? Is there an activity in your business that um, you really helps you, really helps you get more clients or leads or something that you're thinking of adding? Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on the blog. So if you're watching this anywhere else, come over to the blog as well. If you're in your first or second year of coaching and you feel like you might have some pieces missing into the business model and you're not really sure if you've got all your ducks in a row, I want to uh, I want to let you know that you can download the 
ultimate uh, coaching business checklist, which is a checklist and a video series that I created to help you go full time in your business. So it's really going to help you understand all the things that you need, help you understand the marketing pieces. Um, it's really, really phenomenal. I'm so excited about this. So then you can really see if you're missing anything, it'll help clear that monkey brain because you know the things you need to do, get that checklist off, which I just love. Um, so you can do that on the blog by clicking the button below uh, and uh, you'll receive the checklist and then you can sign up for the video series and you're really going to love it. I can't wait to share it with you. So that's it for today. If you liked this video, please do share it with your friends. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.